Hello, my name is Rafael Benitez, and she's Pilar Hernandez, and we're both creators of PAL, Partagion Le Monde, an organization that creates awareness about intercultural relations through art and traditions of the world. We were born in Mexico, and we have been living in the neighborhood since 2015. We are interested in creating bridges between people from different origins. And that's how we create this project, in collaboration with L'Atelier d'Histoire NDG, to go and find people and voices on how this community was built. We present you Manu and Munir that are going to talk about their immigration process and their adaptation to the Montreal weather. Okay, so, hi. Hi, I'm Maria. <laughs> I'm Maria. <laughs> so, I, we've been asked to talk about our experience in arriving in NDG. So I've been here, I'm an old timer, I would say, because I've been here, I suppose, Montreal 1976, okay. and NDG, I think 1978-79. So I enrolled at the University of Concordia. I had just become Concordia, actually. It used to be Loyola College. And I, that's where I started my NDG life, really as a student at Concordia. So I met my future husband then, uh, his mother worked there, so we were dating in places that I don't think you ever, ever <laughs> heard of. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and to start with, around Loyola, there was a golden moon and there was Mr. Hot Dog. Have you heard of those? I no. think the sign of Mr. Hot Dog is at the university, actually. There was this professor who was uh, collecting signs from all buildings. So what else can I tell you? I dated going to Cinema 5, which is now a very political <laughs> war going on with that building. You know what Cinema 5 is? Um, not that much. <laughs> it's, it's called, it was called the Empress, I think, in the old days. Okay. But I have to tell you that if you walk from Loyola campus, a little bit even farther, and I like to walk every Saturday to do my shopping, I would say that there might be maybe two or three businesses that are the same that okay, that's it. since I came here. <laughs> everything else has changed. The whole picture and changed a few times. Yeah, I, I can. So from Steinberg's, have you heard of Steinberg's? No. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm only here since 2013, so. <laughs> okay, so all that is gone. But sometimes there is little leftovers of buildings at the entrance of Provigo or the Metro in Somerlet, you see a big S, and those used to be Steinbergs, and they were like little mosaics at the entrance. And, you know, that's only, that's what's left, I suppose. Yeah. So my picture of NDG, it was as arriving, is very different from yours. Yeah, so I tell me imagine, about yours. I can imagine, well, me, um, uh, well, my name is Munir, and, uh, yeah, I'm here since 2013, so it's it's um, it's not long, but I, for me, Montreal, NDG, it's almost synonymous because I spent only one week out of NDG, and then I moved in here. Uh, it was a kind of in and out at the beginning. Uh, that's why maybe I didn't connect directly like you, you know, with uh, university lifestyle. It's that's you really jump in. For me, I spent, I think, a month and then I traveled uh, for seven months and then I came back. I spent uh, five, six months and then I traveled again. So the first two years it was in and uh, out. During that period, all I knew was the daycare where my son goes to, uh, which is uh, the, the Galerie uh, de Samarlet. Maria is the, 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 the angel of that, uh, of that Was gallery. your son born here? No, actually, when we came, he was not even two years. Goes two years, but two, two years. But obviously, you know, his um, daycare experience, everything happened in here. And in Honestly, I sometimes I have more contact with people that are thousands of kilometers away, all over the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> than than my neighborhood. And and sometimes we're overwhelmed with this that I have to schedule time to attend to the, all the small messages and send my news to everyone and. Um, and, and yeah, I can, because even my wife, she's very uh, social, social person, but we're not that involved. It's just this casual conversation. You know, at the 
park, school, daycare, or, you know, you, you establish relationships? With? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. But then, you know, everyone is busy, so it remains within that context. So, we, yes, I mean, obviously, we're, the busiest time in the year is when it's Christmas, because then you remember mm. everyone that's around you, you start giving that, that small gift. Um, but other than this, um, you know, once the, um, uh, with the daycare, for example, as we said, we're still in, in touch with them. Now my son, he's, he's nine years old, he changed two, three schools ever since, but uh, always within NDG, of course. So I found through my kids, that's when I really, well, my husband was from NDG, but it was the kids really that made me sink into this community because, you know, you start, I was a stay home mom and so I, I you know I belong to everything that the kids belong to and and you know through the school the, you know parents committee to field trips and all kinds of things so that's what made me relate to other parents and 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 really become an ndg -er. <laughs> so my first winter 1976-1977 it was the first time I saw snow so when it started snowing, there was these big, big flakes. And I ran to the window. I was living at a, in a house in Kotzenwood. And I saw all this snow coming down. It was like a fairy tale come true to me. So I ran and I wrote letters to my family because I used to write every week. There was, you know, phone calls were expensive and there was no computer, internet, whatever we use now, WhatsApp. So I wrote letters, it's snowing, está nevando. It was like the biggest thing. Well, I tell you, 40 years after, <laughs> <laughs> damn, it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, definitely very different now. And uh, I was very, very afraid of ice. I'm petrified of the ice and sometimes I I'm walking and I see somebody else coming, walking the same, and we just say hello. It's like, yeah, you're an immigrant too, eh? <laughs> so it never goes away, that's for sure. And um, I feel a little, a little bit more at ease with winter. Kind of okay. There was that fear of winter to a point, and now I just, well, I take it the way it is. <laughs> Yeah. How about your winter experience? Well, Are you I, comfortable? I, I, re I really relate to this, because, but I think at the, um, especially people that we come from the southern uh, hemisphere, we've never seen it except in the movies. Our first experience with the snow is always great. And my, my first experience was short, because I decided actually to come in one of the years during winter, just to see what my kids are experiencing while I'm working overseas. Um, and it was, was, I came for my birthday also. Uh, I came actually the, I, I, just on my birthday. So I reached the Montreal airport that specific day. Um, and then I spent like three weeks or four weeks here. So it was fun. We will go skating, everyone for the first time. I mean, the kids maybe, <laughs> they started, but, um, uh, and, and, and I still enjoy it. Still enjoy it after um, after five complete or six complete winters that I'm yeah. here. Um, from one part, maybe because I was missing this, um, you know, after living 16 years in, in, in Dubai, so it was like s summer for 16 years. <laughs> I was I was looking forward for the changes of the season. Now, obviously, fall is my season. It's unfortunate that it's it's too short. Uh, but uh, but I still enjoy winter and I think our living style also. We're in an apartment, yeah. we don't have to shovel. Uh, everything is indoor, even the parking. So uh, so we don't have the inconveniences of, of the winter. Um, today it's not that cold, but as you can see also, I think my, my, my circulation system is Good. okay with the, <laughs> what I don't stand is the heat. Okay. So, uh, so in, in you know most this winter, I think maybe I had to put my heavy jacket twice or three times. Otherwise, 
Yeah. Uh, it's it's not necessary. So no, so far so far so good. <laughs> I remember when the kids were little and going to school. I mean, I always took them to the park, no matter what the weather. But the first time my son went to the park, we had been in Mexico and we came back, and he was about two years old and put him in the snow with the snowsuit, and he said, "Can we go back to our living room now?" <laughs> he wasn't that happy, and he's like, "You were born here." <laughs> But anyway, I used to put fake flowers, three pots of fake flowers in our balcony. I wanted my kids, when they were walking back from school, they would walk back for lunch. And uh, to recognize their house as the house of the flowers, instead of saying like, at least they knew where the house. So it became the house of the flowers. So I, anybody who would give an address, oh, I'm three doors down from the house of the flowers. Or like, oh no, I'm right across the street from the house of the flowers. We became a landmark <laughs> and went down. a landmark for a while. And uh, it was mainly because I wanted my kids to see their house as a happy house, you know, walking in the winter. I also used to give them mental health days once a month. So we stayed home and we turned the house into summer and we paint flowers and put them on the wall and you know, wear shorts and I'll give them popsicles and I figure if people that work are entitled to one mental health, you know, <laughs> why not kids, you know, especially when winter is so hard. So yeah, I I, I made fun of winter a little bit. <laughs> I tried to dare it <laughs> with my summer day.